In this tissue section, we can see the ampulla region of the oviduct. And essentially, the ampulla region is closer to the ovary than it is to the uterus. And in particular, the oviduct has three distinct layers. On the left-hand side of the screen, we can see a layer of simple squamous epithelium. This is called the serosa and is essentially the uh, peritoneum that is the broad ligament. And just deep to the serosa, we can see all this loose connective tissue that's filled with blood vessels. And just deep to this loose connective tissue, we'll come to this, the second um, major layer. This is the muscularis. And it should be composed of an outer longitudinal layer and an inner circular layer. But in this case, it looks rather indistinct as to where the boundaries of these uh, muscle smooth muscle layers are. And deep to this muscularis layer, we'll see the mucosal layer, which is considered or characterized by all these mucosal folds that are extending into the lumen of this oviduct. And the oviduct has um, two distinct cell types. So if we look at the, this mucosal fold, in particular in the center of the screen, we can zoom in and see clearly the two cell types. So right away we can see cells that have cilia that are projecting from the apical surfaces of these two cells. So these are aptly named ciliated cells and they're going to help propagate the ova as, it, as it's being released and brought in by fimbria into the infidibulum and now we're along the ampulla. They're going to help um, sort of brush or propagate the ova towards the uterus. And amongst these ciliated cells Beside them, we're going to see these cells that are more basophilic and more bulbous in shape as they sort of project a little further into the lumen. These are known as uh, non ciliated cells because they don't have cilia on the apical surface, but they're also known as PEG cells. Um, the PEG cells, uh, they're sort of named because they look like they've, in some cases, been sort of hammered into the mucosal lining, kind of like the appearance of a golf tee in some cases, that they're kind of. Uh, hammered into this mucosa and they kind of look like a bit of a nail and some sometimes um, but they uh, secrete um, a nutrient fluid that's going to help support uh, the ova during its travels along to the uterus and the ampulla region is important because this is actually the site of fertilization where the sperm is actually going to fertilize the egg and the oviduct in general is important because this is where the process of capacitation occurs in which the, sp the sperm that are traveling through the oviduct are actually going to gain the ability to fertilize the egg. And finally, finally clinically, the oviduct is important because approximately 98% of ectopic pregnancies can occur within the oviduct. So in summary, the oviduct had three coverings. We had a serosa, we had a muscularis layer, with a outer longitudinal and an inner circular, and then we had a mucosal lining characterized by these large mucosal folds. So essentially, the oviduct is acting as a conduit, bringing the ova towards the uterus.